Welcome to Legacy Truths. Today is March 24th, 2018. Today we're going to be getting into a little bit of Elijah, but mostly it's the uh, third temple in uh, the state of Israel and Jerusalem. So uh, stick around. We're going to get into it. So we're seeing that uh, at, at no point in time since 70 AD that there's actually been a quote-unquote third temple in Jerusalem in the state of Israel. So we know that uh, the, it, the state of Israel's 70th birthday is coming up here very soon and that the United States Embassy um, wanted to be built and opened up at uh, the same time to celebrate uh, Israel's uh, 70th anniversary. So I want to tie in a couple of uh, scriptures. Now, of course, we, we can't unpack this whole thing in, in this small episode. This, this end times uh, prophecy uh, research is it, it's a lifetime of stuff, and I still will do it for the rest of my life. So um, well, let's get into it here. So what some of the things I was looking at, and let me just kind of do this right here. Is, um, so... This kind of stuff here is, is, I just typed in the Third Temple 2018, or no, excuse me, U.S. Embassy, and I'm just getting stuff off of Google here. <clears throat> um, and this is telling, just showing shots of the U.S. Embassy, where it's at, what it looks like, some of the different uh, angles of it. Um, I wanted to, uh, there was a couple of shots here. Here we go. So I was just looking at these different, different pictures, very interesting looking uh, embassy. Uh, there's different shots of the, the the corner here, different sides of it. Kind of wondering what this whole symbology is of this, just the way it's built. Uh, the, the architecture is very interesting in this thing. Let me see here. Let's go if we can't go view more. So this gives you an idea of at least what the physical place looks like. So, so I kind of have, we were talking about, whereas there's like this 70-year uh, birthday um, of when the state of Israel became a state, um, and we know that the U.S. Embassy uh, has been in Tel Aviv for, for years now, and they have been planning to eventually build an embassy in Jerusalem. Um, and, of course, it's come to flourishing now here in 2018. So we can see that... That this temp that this embassy here, some people are maybe third temple, maybe it's the embassy. Um, I saw this here on uh, the PentecostTheology.com. Now, by no means do I am I a Pentecostal. Um, do I do I? Uh, I don't. Yes, I believe in the spirit of, uh, of the Holy Spirit of speaking in tongues. I do. And there's going to be a video coming up very soon about uh, how I believe about speaking in tongues and what what the Bible says uh, about what speaking in tongues is. Um, and I'm not going to define that at this point in time. But this this picture really gives you a great timeline. <clears throat> Whoever did this, and I don't know, um, I think it's beaniewest.com. Trade one is like a... a Make posts, just the graphics. I can't kind of really see this here. Anyway, so basically, when I say the 70 years, this kind of gives you an idea of basically 1948 was when Israel became a state. Um, you know, a nation born in one day. There's prophecy. There's a little bit of prophecy stuff right there. But 70 years, we talk about the the Shemitah. Um, we know that God likes to work with the number seven. I um, mean, there was six days of work, and the seventh uh, day that He he rested not because he was tired, because he hallowed it. He uh, he ah sat back and enjoyed his creation, and that's the day that we call the Sabbath day that we call holy. And it's <clears throat> it's not traditionally the day that most people think it is on the um, Gregorian calendar we have here in 2018. But neither the last on that calendar um, in 1948 it became a state, and then here in 2018 is your you know 70 years equals 2018. So we can see that 
in the time of it was uh, it was born to up until 2018, <clears throat> we're looking at this is this is the third templeish uh, area. We have it's already being built. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so this kind of gives you a little bit of a timeline of to kind of look this up. And again, this is from the Pentecost Theology.com, so you can go check us out yourself. But let's get into some scripture to see what what's going to be happening. Um, because we're gonna, we want to be, we want our stuff to be our our research and opinions to be based on uh, biblical truths. And so, <clears throat> in this right here, this is obviously the the temple destruction foretold. Um, um, let's see, this is Matthew twenty four. Um, and so this is basically what we're getting up as he's going to be telling you the signs and what's going to be happening in the build up to the third temple. And we all know that we've heard the, the classic verse, oh, there's going to be wars and rumors of wars. And, you know, of course, it's right here, Matthew 24, verse 6, uh, ye shall hear wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all those things must come to pass, for the end is not yet. For the nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginnings of sorrows. <clears throat> so we can see this is the under the uh, the false Christ. And then, by the way, this is the uh, the King James uh, um, interpretation version of this. Um, but another thing that I was really wanting to kind of touch on here in Matthew, and there's some more we're going to be going over, but um, it talks about the abomination of desolation. And people like, well, they, they've said many different things. Um, we know that the, uh, the Maccabees uh, kind of goes a little bit more in depth of, of what the abomination of desolation is at that time when the Greeks came in and they were the ones who destroyed, I think it was Titus, I believe, who actually just had a, the, the, the second temple destroyed. Um, but beforehand, there was abomination of desolation. Like here in uh, 15, let's go ahead and read this. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, whosoever readeth, let them understand. When we're talking about the holy place. This is that third temple that they're going to be building that's already built. Then let them which be in Judea. Now this is he's he, this is this is the time of when you talk about the who is a Jew or this part. This is this, he's talking about the Roman providence of Judea. And so if you were in that Roman providence of Judea, you would be called a Judean. So he's telling all the Judeans that are in the Judea Roman providence. Uh, Sixteen, uh, flee into the mountains. Number seventeen, uh, verse seventeen. Let them which who, who is on the housetop, not come down and take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back with his clothes. And woe unto that heart with child, and let them give stuck into those days. But pray ye that you fight not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For ye shall be in great tribulation, such as not, such as not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor shall ever be. And it says, goes on to say, except those days be shortened, there shall be no flesh be saved. For the elect's sake, for those days that shall be shortened. For many men say to you, lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise a false Christ, a false prophet, and shall show, show great signs and wonders. And stomach that, if we were possible, that they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. <clears throat> so we can see that in Matthew, it's kind of giving us a, a, a little bit of overview, and he does speak referencing Daniel. And uh, so let's go to Daniel here. This is the, Daniel chapter 12. Um, so this is the, the, the this is Michael's deliverance at end times. So this is also bleeding into or, or coming into what's going to be happening in the end times. Now, a lot of this is very, I wouldn't say blanketed, because we know that a lot of this stuff is happening right now. We know, well, let's just see here, let's get into, um, and we already know chapter one tells about there shall be great uh, troubles uh, such as never been before at the time. <clears throat> so let's, let's start with chapter, or, uh, verse two. It says, many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. 
some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as brightness of the firmament, and that they turn up to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words that seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Now that knowledge being increased, I wholeheartedly believe that that's the introduction of the internet. Um, it doesn't really necessarily say right here that knowledge shall be increased in a technological form, but one can definitely say that I can pull knowledge from other countries in a matter of nanoseconds. And so we can see that it's telling you a kind of different little, listen, people are going to be running to and fro. There's going to be, there's going to be wars, rumors of wars. That's happening now. Knowledge shall be increased. Now, not, not any other time in history where we've been able to actually increase society's knowledge collectively at such an accelerated rate. When I was younger, before the internet really, before it was even out, the when you would hear a man speak or hear a woman speak who was who you thought man that this person's really intelligent they they had their points they had the knowledge they did the research they did the books all this kind of stuff and there was no internet so you couldn't go out there and get a 45 dissert, uh, page dissertation of molecular science in the way of wood you you had to go do the research and do the time and so very few people, their knowledge was held in their head, and that was a great means of respect of this is a very wise man he's, or a woman. They, they've been doing the research, and a lot of it's in their head to where nowadays it's, you don't have to be. You don't have to retain knowledge because there is a platform that, that does that for you automatically. And one could even it, – it's a translator. I, I can speak in any language right now through my through through the the translator so so this this knowledge shall be increased this is already happening and we can see a, a very definite timeline of where we know that it is happening here so let's go on to second thessalonians they talk about the man of sin so this is a second Th uh, excuse me <laughs> tongue twister second thessalonians chapter two um now, this is talking about um, when, you know, uh, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ um, by our gathering unto him. Uh, let me go down here. <clears throat> so verse 3 is really, really what I want to kind of get into the meat of this one here in Second Thessalonians. It says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there be a great falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and now ye know what withheldeth he might be revealed in his time for the majesty for the mystery of iniquity doth already work only he who knoweth letteth who will let unto he be taken out of the way I, basically it's a kind of a tongue twister he's saying only god knows this kind of stuff there are signs and we do know things that are coming on to being revealed and there are there are definite things that that have to be that have to take place transpire how that's going to look uh it's, we don't know um, at least I, I personally, it's not going to tell you it's going to look exactly like this and be this tall and be this. It doesn't really give a, a real, I guess, engineering outlook of what it's going to be. And it says, even when Jesus is talking to, to, um, to his disciples, you know, we're, we're talking, this is um, for the mystery of the iniquity doth already work. He's telling them it's already working right now. He, he, Satan's already running back and forth doing his thing. <clears throat> so it even says, uh, getting into uh, verse 8, And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. Wow, that's powerful. Amen to that. And destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him who is coming after the, workings of, the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. And with all deceivableness, unrighteousness to them that perish, because they, not, they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. 
And for this cause, God shall send a, a strong delusion that they should believe a lie and that all might be damned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. And so what that's telling us is there's going to be a great falling away before this third temple, all this stuff starts to get ramped up. And we can see that today. We can literally see the, 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 the degradation of social morals or even the, the morality on a whole on, on, on this earth is just getting more evil is becoming people are labeling it as good. And so, you know, I, um, I just stand and say that you guys, you know, this is, this is what it's telling us. And so you know, we couldn't, we couldn't do any type of, um, uh, prophecy stuff that we unless we get into to revelation, we know that Daniel is the keys uh, to unlock revelation because revelation quotes Daniel and, and, and really drives or derives a lot of its sustenance from the book of uh, the book of the prophet of Daniel. So when we see here, this is um, Revelation 13. Um, and of course, this is actually the dragon that stood up on the shore. I saw a beast coming out with 10 horns and seven heads. Now this is, if you go back in the book of Daniel, this explains all of this metaphors, 10 horns, seven heads with 10 crowns and its horn. So if you just read Revelations 13 and nothing else, you're like, oh my gosh, this big giant beast is coming out. Oh yeah, this is, but you have to read the book of Daniel because the Daniel actually describes what the 10 horns are and the seven heads and the 10 crowns. So Let's get in here um, after he kind of ex explains one of, um, after he explains kind of what it looks like um, after the bear, like a mouth, like a lion. Okay, so this is where a lot of, there's, there's, there's multiple, I don't want to say interpretations, but uh, uh, multiple views. And because interpretations is not really the, the right word. It's really how you, how you view the reading, really. Um, the dragon the fallen angel, Lucifer Hasatan, gave the beast his power. So the dragon and the beast are two separate things. Um, so we got we to gotta, we gotta distinguish that here. Um, and so you can't just lump them all together. Oh, they're just going to do this. this there's, 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 there's individual parties involved in this. So let's see here. This is uh, towards the end of verse 2. And after it describes what this beast looks like, it says, The dragon gave the beast his power. Now, what is the beast? The beast, I saw a story, I saw a beast coming out of the sea. It had ten horns, seven heads. So, so you got to do a little bit of research here in Daniel, which I, I'll gently touch upon before we get done. But the dragon gave the beast his power and his throne and great authority. One of the heads of the beast seemed to have a fatal wound, but the fatal wound had been healed. The whole world was filled with wonder and followed the beast. People worshipped the dragon because he had given authority to the beast. And they also worshipped the beast and asked, Who is like the beast? Who can wage war against it? The beast had given a mouth to, other, to utter proud words and blasphemies and to exercise its authority, its authority, for 42 months. It opened its mouth to blaspheme God and to slander his name in the dwelling place and those who live in heaven. It was given power. It keeps on saying it. So it's, it, it's remember, there, there, there's definite individual entities it's describing here. Um, it opened its mouth, blaspheme God. It was given power to wage war against God's holy people and to conquer them. So wage war against God's people and to conquer them, not just to wage war, but to conquer them. All of the inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast, all whose names have not been written in the Lamb's book of life, the Lamb who was slain from the creation of the world. Whoever has ears, let them hear. If anyone is to go into captivity, into captivity they will go. If anyone will be killed with the sword, with the sword they will be killed. <clears throat> so, we really got to break down, like I said, there's this. And so wrapping it up here, um, we know that in the, in the end times, the, uh, the, the Jewish, uh, the Jewish faith 
on Pentecost um, or Pesach, they um, they open the door on those evenings to see to let Elijah in to see if he's there because the, Elijah is going to be coming and proclaiming the Messiah, and so we even see that in the end days there will be two prophets and I'm going to see here I know that um, I know it was here somewhere I just found it <clears throat> so yes uh, and I Gabriel's prophecy of the 70 weeks I saw it here I had a I'm, I was trying to look for I don't know if this was Daniel, because this is Daniel 11. Kings of the South shall be strong. So I was going through basically Daniel 9 and Daniel 11 to really get through the revelation to get in there. And, <clears throat> and this talks about the king of the south and the king of the north. Um, so, you know, I just want to kind of wrap up and with this one right here with the third temple of some of the timeline and we're going to be um, getting into with, we know what's happening now. It is 2018. It's March 24th. So we know that, that this stuff isn't theoretical anymore. The stones and the mortars have been put top together, and there's now a structure built. And they are currently now getting ready for the grand opening, the festivities on the on Israel's 70th birthday. So this stuff can't be ignored, even in the grand scheme of things of what's happened in our politics nowadays, because um, it's getting crazy. And what's everything has been a build up, a pinnacle, a crescendo, if you will, of what's happening. So I appreciate you guys watching today. Um, you know, this is, it, it, this is, it's, share this kind of information out because it seems to be shared um please subscribe like the video and remember it's 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 what jesus christ our messiah had did for us is why that we can we can call upon his name and we can gird ourselves with the full armor of god because understanding scripture it says is literally the the the, the sword of the spirit literally is the word and we can't discount something that people say, oh, it's this ancient religion way back then. And no, um, this is happening now. Um, so I appreciate it and God bless and um, have a beautiful day.